Hi, this is Maxon from Small Cuts. I'm experimenting with a new type of video. Um, I recently bought these Battlefield Evolution pre-painted models, which are quite frankly not that great models. But the interesting thing with them is that you can throw those away and something useful came in the box. They were packaged with these clear plastic thingies that have the shape of the vehicle imprinted on them and I'm thinking of using these as molds to cast some wreck markers. Let's see how this works out. Okay, so the first step is to prepare the plaster. I'm actually using a high-density plaster I usually use with Hearst Arts molds, but for this project basically anything will do. I just happen to have this handy. So, take any old thing and measure the plaster according to whatever instructions you have. This particular brand goes three parts of plaster to two parts of water. Like so. Measure the water. This is not an exact science. And mix it up. Once the plaster is ready, we can start casting. Taking these plastic packing protectors or whatever they're supposed to be, you place them on the table like so. Okay, that one. let's put some. And then just pour the plaster into the molds. Okay, so remember we are making wrecks, so you're not looking for a perfect cost anyway. Something that comes out with the basic shape of the vehicle is just fine. Okay, let's. One more. And use up all you can because otherwise you'll have to just scrape it out of the pot anyway. Then a good whack to get rid of some air bubbles and leave it to dry. Okay, now the plaster has dried enough to be removed from the mold, so basically just flex it a little bit, turn it upside down and plop, out it goes. Do the other ones, like so. ones. There you are. Now these are still wet and I actually find it that the plaster contains moisture for several days. So unless you want to put them in an oven or something just leave them out to dry. That's why I have several projects going on at the same time. I don't care if it takes a week for these to dry. I'll just do something else meanwhile. But uh, since I have taken note from TV cooks and ha I already cast some other ones, so now we're gonna make some bases for these. Uh, 
All right, moving on to next stage. These are now thoroughly dry. So we are going to make a base for them. I'm picking up a random piece of scrap hardboard that I just happen to have lying about. Take one of these and uh, trace a rough line around it. So, then we are going to use this heavy duty shears to cut uh, this out of the hardboard. Then we use this to clean up the edges a bit. And then we get the glue and actually glue this rack piece down. All right, so the next thing we want to do is sort of repair that barrel we just broke off, so we'll just take a measure of pretty much anything, measure it roughly and just snap it and sort of glue it into place. Like so. It'll be covered pretty soon, so it doesn't really matter what it's looking like. This is approximating a broken bent barrel. Uh, that should be good enough. So my camera decided to lose this section, so I gotta do it again. And I don't have the actual Rex anymore, so I'm just gonna sort of fake it. To see how it goes. To cover the vehicle rack in sludge, sand, whatever, we are going to use a mixture of tiling grout, white glue and plain water. Start off by taking some tiling grout into a mixing bowl add some water and a hefty dose of white glue let's see how it looks So we mix this Okay, it's way too runny So we're gonna add some more plaster This is not very exact, but you're looking for a sort of mud-like consistency here. A little more. I think it's about ready now. Yeah. You don't want it to run all over the place when you put it on top of the vehicle. You rather use a 
heavy stiff brush to apply it. So let's take one and try it. So you'll start like this. Try to smooth out all the hard edges. Next we will put some sand on these bases. Let's mix a little bit of white glue with water. Right, like so. Then on to painting. Um, we will paint the underlying vehicle first because we can be pretty sloppy about it and cover it with the sand color later on. We take a whatever basic military green color I happen to have handy and start working on this. I thought about doing it in more sandy uh, color also for the tanks but then again, you lose the contrast. Just quickly apply the basic color to the exposed parts of the vehicles. Then we take some basic interior latex paint in a suitably grayish, dusty, sandy color. Okay, 
So now, so now we basically have two options. If you want this to represent vehicles that have been just buried by a sandstorm or something like that, you can leave them as is. But, or if you want to show that they have been lying there abandoned for a slightly longer length of time, we can add something more to the bases and I, quite frankly I think these need something to live them up a little bit so let's add some rocks right here I have a jar of rocks which is really just I sifted this from the playground sand you could also buy them in the store somewhere for huge prices I guess but it's rocks all right, and here I have a dab of white glue, and we will start applying glue to the base and sticking some stones on. Okay, and we're looking for a recess where stones would naturally appear. And let's take the tank, a little bit more glue. Add some water. That looks like a good spot for some sand. stone there and there's a good spot in any case and also around the gravel here let's put some sand on top over there here and there okay that looks good we'll just basically let it dry, hit it with a coat of varnish to protect it, and then add some final touches, and we are done. Okay, the glue is dry. Let's liven up the bases a little bit. I got here normal sepia ink, and I'm just gonna dab it into random spots on, on the bases. Okay, ready for the final touches. So, I varnished these off screen because there's really nothing to see in that. I just hit them with a couple of sprays of matte varnish to keep the paint from rubbing off on whatever. So, now to add a little bit of livening up, I will use these ready tufts. All right, so I made a couple more of these off camera. Let's have a closer look at them. So um, this is the original tank that I did. And uh, then I did these three Jeeps. There's a piece with, um, with, uh, with I think it's actually an anti-air tank and another Jeep and then some remains of a wall here we have two APs this is the original that I made and then a new one with a 
collided with a Jeep. Uh, there's a whole pack of Jeeps, all buried under whatever. Uh, another APC over there. All right, here's a tank that um, has had a slight traffic accident. Okay, these are the original Jeeps that I made. A couple more here. As you can see, I didn't cover the windows on the newer Jeeps, and I I, I just sort of um, painted them roughly blackish, leaving giving an impression of a shadow there instead of doing it really precisely. And um, actually, I have no idea what that is supposed to be. I guess it's another APC. All right. So, um, um, making these off-camera was substantially faster than, than trying to do it on-camera. And, as always with projects like this, it pays to do as many similar items as you can at one go. Then you get the color schemes matching and um, so on. It can get a bit boring, but still, if you want to do a lot of them, fast, then that's really the only way to go. Let's um, grab some figures and, uh, and do some action shots.